Uh, good day to everybody. Uh, so today uh, we're going to go through the uh, tutorial number number three. Okay. So last week we share on the uh, on the memory system. I think uh, we shared on the uh, various uh, volatile and non-volatile memory system. And uh, also we share about the uh, little and the uh, big Indian configurations. So today, uh, we're going to discuss about uh, some of the uh, important issues on the memory system. And I've uh, selected some issues that uh, we can uh, discuss about. So uh, we, we discussed about the uh, endianness. I think uh, this story of uh, this term, uh, endianness, is uh, they, they extract it from a story called the uh, Gulliver's Travel, where you have uh, uh, little people, uh, and uh, these uh, little people are divided into a few groups. Okay, the, uh, and uh, they are divided into the way they, they ordered how the king ordered how they boil the eggs okay so this is just a, a story but uh this story actually give them a bit of inspiration on how they should actually store uh information on the memory okay so um uh, whether the uh significant bit should be stored in the uh in the uh in the memory first or whether it's the least significant memory that should be stored okay so uh, yeah, this is just an illustration. Uh, the breaking of the egg actually gave them the inspiration for, for these uh, kind of terms. I'm having a, a, a very bad ulcer. So uh, if you hear my voice is a bit weird, then uh, you just understand that uh, there is a bit of problem in my speech now. Okay, so uh, let's assume that we have a question. I think this uh, there are a few examples even in the lecture that, that you can actually go through, okay? So another way of actually uh, writing hacks is uh, including this uh, dollar sign symbol. Okay, so if in, in a program, you include this uh, dollar sign, uh, you, this whole uh, information will be regarded as hacks. Okay, so uh, you you might see in some textbook that they use this uh, dollar sign. Okay, so show how you save a sixteen bit value zero three e eight into uh zero eight five one and zero eight five zero using little Indian uh little Indian and big Indian conventions okay so um okay this is uh I did not show you how to uh, which one is which one because uh I probably want you to do some polls and try to guess you know from the uh, previous lecture slides we discussed okay now uh you can attempt it okay try to pause this video attempt it okay and um this is the uh, progression of the memory, okay, from uh, 50 to 51, 50 to 51. Now, uh, the information that we want to save is 03E8, okay? So the little Indian convention, which on, is on your left, uh, stores the uh, least significant bit first, followed by the most significant bit. So generally, this one will be uh, the little Indian convention, whereas this one, you know, it's a straightforward. They will store the most significant bit. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I think there's a bit of mistake. You have. Uh, okay. So this is the mistake. So I, I hope that you understand, okay? Even through my mistakes, probably highlight something to you, okay? So in the little convention, uh, this side on the left-hand side, it's a little, little Indian convention, and the, uh, the left-hand side is the little Indian, and right-hand side is the uh, big Indian, okay? So you can see that big Indian stores the most significant bit in the higher order memory, and uh, the most significant bit in the higher order, and the least significant bit in the lower order of the memory, okay? So if you're doing exam, don't simply rush to write the answers as such, okay? Observe the order of the memory first, okay? So the memory goes from 
lower order to higher order. Now this is an example of um, 16 bit. What if we have 32 bit value, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 into this series of memory. Now we are assuming that each memory slot is uh, uh, carries uh, 8 bits information. Okay, so show that how you store in uh, using little endian and big endian convention. Okay, so um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, uh, try to guess uh, which one uh, the most significant bit will be. Uh, one followed by two, three, four. So this is the most significant. Uh, Twelve is the most significant byte. All right. So. Um, So we share it as such, okay, we take the least significant byte, put it here, okay, followed by the, uh, and the lowest order of the memory will store the most significant byte, all right? Whereas, uh, purposely make it both one small and one big so that we can actually remember it, okay? Now look at the bigger, bigger table, right? The bigger table in terms of size, it's uh, the most significant bit will be in the higher order, followed by the uh, lower, uh, lower, uh, lower order. Okay, lower order will contain the uh, least significant bit bytes, and the higher order memory will contain the most significant. So, if the answer actually requires you to uh, write out something like this, you should be able to actually answer, right? Okay, a bit of a design question. Explain how you design an addressing system for a microprocessor. Okay, 16-bit addressing system. So your, your microprocessor has a 16-bit addressing. It, it only can handle 16-bit, okay? To control four units of 8 bits SRAM. Okay, so SRAM is something that we learn about, okay? The volatile memory. Uh, you can use three bits to so this is the hints that I'm actually giving you. Uh, actually, this one this question came out quite some time ago. Okay, I think a few years ago. Okay, uh, you can use three bits to eight line decoder. Okay, so decoder is something like you know, uh, you can actually select one of this. Uh, y is basically the output. Okay, so you can see why this is an actual IC that people use. And I do use this for some of my projects. Okay. So by selecting A, uh, A2 to A0, you can actually, actually cause one of these outputs uh, to be one or zero, okay? Of course, at any time, only one will be uh, set, the other will be reset. So that's why they call it the decoder. It's not a mux, okay? If it mux functions differently, you use a three bit to eight line decoder. It means to say that uh, the line, can be connected, a positive uh, five volts or zero can be connected to one of these, okay? Now this is the truth table. Um, a bit of, uh, just, this is called D, but uh, I mean the Y, uh, this D you can just replace with a Y. It's just, uh, I copy paste from uh, different uh, sources, but that's okay, we understand. So by, uh, Adjusting the A2 to A0, we can actually configure each of these uh, outputs to be uh, to, to select one of these outputs. Now, I actually uh, mentioned to you in uh, SRAM, um, you can actually have a they, ha they actually have these uh, enable bits, okay, enable bits uh, that you can uh, disable or enable any SRAM that you, you want. So, if you come in a package that uh, one means the chip is enabled, okay? Zero means the chip is not enabled. So we can actually con uh, connect and control four SRAM simultaneously, okay? Now, uh, I call it my apologies because this is a hand-drawn, but I need to do it fast. So this is the microprocessor that we're looking into. And this is the uh, uh, HC74 that uh, we are interested. This is a three to eight line decoder. But instead of using three to eight line, we're only using uh, we're only using the uh, only four lines because two to the power of uh, 
2 to the power of 2, we can actually control 4. Okay, if we, if we have another 4, we can still control using just one of this H74 uh, logic. Okay, but uh, 2 to the power of 3, we can control 8 lines. So all we need is basically uh, two lines. Probably we do not need A2. We only need A1 and 0. Okay. So it's a bit waste. Uh, it's a bit waste for this 16 micro, uh, my 16 bit microcontroller microprocessor to be just to be able to uh, connect to uh, this uh, SRAM. Each SRAM memory slot contains 8 bits. Okay. It is an assumption that we make, right? Now, uh, so this uh, this uh, outputs will on and off enable the uh, individual uh, individual memory, okay, individual memory in the SRAM. So, uh, if you choose zero zero zero, the first uh, this uh, output this uh, Y zero will be five volts. The rest will be zero. So what we can do is we can connect one of the SRAM here, the enabler pin, so that one of the SRAM at only one moment, only one of the SRAM can be can be uh, can be enabled. So we can only read we we only want to read that particular SRAM. Okay. Now uh, this is how we do it. Uh, you have your address since uh, all of our SRAM is eight bits. It's very simple. Okay, it's an eight bits addressing system. So what we do is that uh, we will connect the, uh, of course, the lower byte will will be addressing the uh, memory cell location in each of the SRAM. So uh, the, in the higher byte, since we're saying that the microprocessor has uh, 16, 16 bits, 2 bytes, so A2, A1, and A0 can be used to select. Okay. In fact, actually, we only need it, uh, we only need nine, ten bits. Okay, so this A two is actually redundant. Uh, A two is redundant. No need. So we can actually change this into X. Okay, all we need is X, uh, A one and A zero. So you see, there's a lot of redundant redundancy. Uh, no use. Okay, whereas uh, this one we can use it to address the uh, individual memory slots in each of the SRAM. Okay. So let's say I want to select uh, memory slot 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 in the first RAM. So what do I do is that uh, in the first, uh, uh, I would actually configure the address to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so if everything is 0, it will be addressing the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 or 00H memory slot in the first SRAM. Okay, what if I want to control the uh, 0H00 in the second uh, SRAM? So uh, it's very easy. I, all I need to configure is 0, 0, 1. I'll be able to connect to the second SRAM. What about the third? Okay, so the third one, if I want to connect to the same memory location at the third SRAM. So this one will be 0, uh, 0, 0. And this one will be 0. This one will be 1. This one will be uh, 0. Okay. So 0, 1, 0. I'll be able to connect to the third SRAM. And what about the fourth? The fourth one will be 0, 1, 1. So that's how I actually connect to the different locations of the uh, of the uh, SRAM, okay. So this SRAM has an uh, address, okay, eight bits address. But I want to utilize my sixteen bits to be able to connect to the dif different cell locations, okay, memory cell locations, okay. Uh, I can use this actually three to eight line decoder to actually uh, connect. So again, uh, you can actually study this. Uh, we look back into this tutorial. Make sure you understand how is this actually done. Do not understand uh, please send me an email i can uh, further explain to you okay so today we actually discussed uh, just a bit of revision on the NDNC. uh this concept you can read it from the if you are a big uh Gulliver's travel fan you'll be able to know this uh 16 bits 32 bits all right and uh finally we've uh, we talk about a bit on the memory designs 
This is just a preliminary uh, memory design that I want to show you. There are more complicated ones. Uh, like last week, we've shared on the uh, higher bank and the lower bank. Remember, if your memory system has more than 16 bits memory system, you need banks. Okay, So you have a higher bank and you have a lower bank. Okay, So with that, I'd like to end this uh, tutorial session. Uh, something very simple that we discussed, but if you really do not understand, uh, please uh, send me an email. Uh, let's have a discussion, Webex or whatever, alright? So thanks.